Ian Payton out of the Sydney Morning Herald. Discuss. Let's. Welcome to the show, mate. G'day, Martin. How are you, mate? So, it, it's not a concept that hasn't happened before. In July 1989, an Anzac side um, lost to the Lions. <laughs> For somebody who loves this rugby, I can't even remember that. And I suppose that's my concern here, because a manufactured match like this, it leaves me a little cold. How did the idea come about? Yeah, well, it's um, it came about, I guess, in the in the brain of um, Hamish McLennan, one of New Zealand rugby's favourite people. Yes. Um, uh, Look, I think it's it's you know the the British and Irish Lions are touring here in 2025. Obviously, people are putting some thoughts together about how that tour will play out. You know how many games. Um, you know, as you guys know well, they play a, a bunch of lead-up games against the state teams usually, and then one or two others. Um, I think it's kind of in that zone of what the one or two others look like. Um, you know, generally speaking, over here we play, you know, a combined country team, um, some other kind of variations. The, the the Lions played the Barbarians on Hong Kong on the last way, the last trip here. So um, I think it's just one of those thoughts on, on what would be, um, you know, a good competitive match to slot into that into that tour and, and um, McLennan come up with reviving the Anzac 15. So, essentially, it's just about cash, isn't it? It's about making money, squeezing as much out of the lemon that is the Lions as possible. Yeah, look, I, I don't know. I've got a different viewpoint. I, I actually think it'd be, it'd be bloody entertaining, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit kind of bored of the same old, same old in, in international rugby. We kind of play the same test series. We go on the same test tours. Um, there's very little kind of variation and. You know, I love those Barbarians games, for example, um, where it's kind of all thrown out the window a little bit and um, players come together and play with guys that they'd never played before. Now, obviously, an Anzac 15 would... would there's a lot of... You know, I wrote yesterday, there'd be a thousand reasons why it, why it won't happen. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm of the mindset, let's see if we can't make it happen. I, I know that... Um, I reckon there'd be, there'd be plenty of interest, we'd argue, for for months and years about who should be in the team and, and you know, whether whether the best of Australia and New Zealand could take down the best of, of the British Isles and I don't know. I am I'm, I'm I'm firmly of kind of, you know, let's let's explore it kind of camp. Oh, and we are absolutely okay to agree to disagree about this. I'm a troglodyte. I'm a dinosaur, Ian. I've got to tell you, mate. <laughs> I'm just yeah. sick of the contrived, meaningless matches. You know, the rugby union here have decided that the All Blacks aura deserves five separate All Blacks teams now. We've got an All Blacks 15 yeah, playing sure. Ireland A this weekend. I feel it dilutes everything. And, and these matches, to me, uh, you know, I mean, I look, I've, I've watched the Bar Bar matches as well. And to be fair, I get a bit bored with it. You know, to me, they look kind of like the the um, the NFL, um, the you know, the Pro Bowl or the NBA All-Star game. I mean, they're 15 tries apiece and things. And I can understand the yeah. entertainment value from people who don't understand their rugby. But as I say, look, I'm a dinosaur, mate. I like a game that ends 12-6 and is actually a test match. So, yeah. yeah, but you, don't, you know, like you don't, you don't have to play for sheep stations every single test match. You know what I mean? And yep. I think that's, I think that that what rugby is actually kind of failing to grasp at the moment is, you know, trying to entertain the fans a little bit. And, and, and there's a balance there. Obviously, you can't you can't trade away your integrity and trade away meaning. And I know both the Wallabies and the All Blacks have you know, a hundred plus years of, of, of that. Um, so, you know, do you, you, you can't, are you right? You can't contrive um, an instantly um, meaningful Wallabies All Blacks team, you know, and I don't know if that's even what you'd be attempting to do. There'd be huge obstacles to doing that, not least getting, you know, first line Wallabies players and first line All Blacks players to be available to play. But I think as far as, you know, um, the opportunity to play a match that would, you know, combine it, it'd be it'd be it'd be um, interesting, it'd be new, it'd be entertaining, um, it'd just be something different on the calendar. You know, like I look back at you, you, you mentioned that 1989 game, and I look back at the old YouTube footage the other day, and um, you know, obviously there were problems there. It was it was hastily arranged, and only three um, all black 
players ended yeah. up coming yeah. over. You know, there were injuries, and it, it, but but I just like the idea that we didn't take things so seriously back then. It was kind of like, yeah, okay, let's chuck another game on the touring schedule, um, and it was something different than just the kind of the standard rote test. You know, week that we get here, they roll up to the same kind of parts of the world and play the same teams and. I know about you, but I'm, I'm, I get a little bit bored of it, and you know maybe that's just that's just an Aussie talking because you know we're not necessarily get, have as much success as as, as we like these yeah, days. Yeah, sure. But, yeah, I understand um, that. I, I really like the idea, you know, and it's kind of it has a little bit of um, you know there's some there's some adjacent kind of themes there about how we approach Super Rugby in the future and that sort of thing. I think we just got to get get our heads out of this. You know, let's do it the same way we've always done it. Ian Payton is with us from the Sydney Morning Herald. And again, your client, abs- I mean, this is the whole thing I love about working in sport, mate. The only thing that is actually right is the score. The rest of it, we just debate. We can talk about, go back to the bar, get another couple of jars and sit down. That's it, yeah. Two yeah. good things about this. One, that, as you say, Hamish McLennan is actually talking to New Zealand rugby now rather than them sniping at each other through through the media yeah. and things. So that's actually a good thing for a start. Plus, I also acknowledge that the perspective you have it on your side is probably different from here because you need something to spice the rugby up. You've got a, a Rugby World Cup coming in 2027, something that is actually going to perhaps entice fans that aren't fans of the game to come and watch. So so I so I get all of that bit of it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do have a couple of questions. I mean, just even working through the insurance of this in terms of the players and things, I mean, that would be a hard one for a starter, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but if they can get it done for a Barbarians game, um, I'm sure they could get yeah, it good done point. for this. Um, I don't know. It it, it it would be. I mean, it, there as I say, there would be a whole heap of logistical complexities. Um, you know, if you were going to get it done, you'd want to make sure that you have, um, you know, the the top tier players, or at least a selection of the top tier players available for it. Where does that fit into the All Blacks, you know, test calendar for that that July as well? So there'd be issues there, but I don't think it's anything that that would be insurmountable um and as far as i I, look i just think that if you know you talked earlier at the top about it being um motivated by money and i I don't doubt that 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 would be part of it but i can also just in my mind's eye picture you know a full house at at allianz stadium here in sydney with as you know there's tons of kiwis who live here that that I, i can see that being a really good game and moreover if you just took a took a bit of a punt and did it then it's something that could even go into the next um, Lions tour to New Zealand too. You know what I mean? It could mm-hmm. be something that, that is another little kind of interesting um, schedule fixture as opposed to kind of playing, a, you know, just the same old doing all the states and, and you know, it's sort of, um, you know, some county teams or whatever. It, it, it's sort of something that I think could live on. And, you know, just at a surface level, I think it would be fascinating. I'd really love for... Australia and New Zealand, we, we love to hate each other, but, you know, like, there's no way in the world that we hate each other more than England and Scotland. No, please. No, you know, exactly. look at Lord. look at um, Look at the way that they combine and actually have pride in that Lions jersey. Now, you're never going to match the Lions. You never, they've, they've got, that's a... Yeah, it's know, unique, steep, isn't it? Yeah. Steeped in tradition. But, you know, I'd love to shoulder arms with the Kiwis and... and and be able to cheer for something together just once, just once, once every four years. I reckon that'd be a, a great opportunity for us to kind of, you know, show pride in our region and and stick it to the palms. You know, when you're talking about, you know, 100,000 fans at what I call the Olympic Stadium, because when I first went there to do the Olympics in 2000, uh, that was that stadium. And I'm just kind of thinking there was a... Yeah, I don't... Look, I'd, I don't think you get 100,000. I, I, I mean Allianz. Yeah, yeah, Allianz. that's right, yeah. Oh, sorry, I should... You know, 40-odd. Oh, I see. Oh, sorry. Okay, not yeah. in front of you. They were talking about it. The MCG was the proposal. The hundred. And I just thought the Olympic Stadium. But I was just thinking back in two thousand when Jonah scored that try in the corner, the game from game yeah. of the century. One hundred nine thousand fans packing in. You know what's happened in the last twenty years that 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 rugby can't attract that anymore on its own. That was just a Bledisloe. T- it had a simple old Bledisloe test, wasn't it? It was. There was a bunch of factors there. I mean, that was. Um, it might have been one of the first rugby games played out there I think um, you were world champions as well that helped yeah there was the world champions there it was obviously a a period of kind of that was a golden era as they like to call it here so um, you know success begets success doesn't it you know like I think that um, 
that 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 all the ingredients were right at the time, and it was kind of in Sydney in particular, it was a, a it was a pretty it was a time where everyone was kind of soaking up every sporting match going around. They played um, that they opened that stadium with an NRL double header and got one hundred and four thousand. Wow! You know? So it was kind okay. of like we we were pretty pumped up about sport in general at that time. But yeah. um, no, look, you know things have changed. Um, obviously, it's. You know, we could we could do a six hour podcast about the the, the failures of Australian rugby if you were ready for it. But um, <laughs> there is the amazing um, the amazing part about it is I'll say this: um, it, it, there, there is there is a real willingness to still support the Wallabies um, and to still go along and watch Blitters League Cup games, as you saw in Melbourne before our French mate ruined everything. Um, you know, that was a full house down in Melbourne on a Thursday night. You yeah. know, so. Um, that's as good an indication, and, and you will you will still get. You know, we sold out three um, three joints for the England series, so there is still a real appetite and a desire for for Australian rugby to do well. There are a lot of Wallaby supporters there, um, and you know, the, I guess the the missing piece is kind of lifting the high performance part, you know, and getting that success back because, as you know, that kind of you know when success is absent, you know, the fans yes. start to drift sure. away too. So. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, bringing, squaring the circle, as they say. I think, you know, events like a potential Anzac 15 where, um, you know, you, you're bringing in kind of, um, you know, a New Zealand element as well. Um, that'd be, I think it'll be really well supported. Finally and quickly, uh, are you going to make the T20 semifinals, mate? I believe there's a twist in the tail coming on Friday and Saturday when we play, when you play, and then the Poms play. I don't think it's over yet. Listen, I have absolutely zero idea how you improve your net run rate. I think you've just got to... Uh, <laughs> we were doing this yesterday. Explain... Nobody knows, mate. No. no, I mean, Pythagoras wouldn't be able to figure it out. No, uh, no. And um, and so, you know, let's just, let's just hope that... Um, you know, I guess, I don't know, is it as simple as winning by 100 runs or something like that? I mean, it's T20, right? And it's kind of actually, it's a really strange old tournament because um, it's a World Cup, but it's, you know, I've got to say it's kind of fair. It's not necessarily grabbing the national attention as, as you might have thought it. So that's the interesting thing about T20, right? You know, like the even the 50 over World Cups that have been here have been sort of, it feels like people are far more kind of, attentive to it and you know obviously test cricket still massive holds yeah. a primacy mm. so you can you can make a world cup out of out of kind of a, a disposable format it doesn't necessarily mean it'll kind of carry meaning 